Magandang umaga. Hi, sir. Good, good, good morning, Mr. Good morning. Good morning. This is also going to be streamed on DWIZ. We're preempting Karambola today. Para sa inyo, oh sir. Oh, my God. Oh, thank you, thank How you. How are you, sir? Kamusta, ang, ano, kamusta na kayo ngayon? Uh, okay na. Um, uh, siguro pareho rin yung ano, experience ko ng ibang tao. Na medyo na... Uh, na sore throat tapos may konting ubo, may konting sipon. Pero yun lang yung ano yung yung masakit yung lalamunan. That was the that is what uh, happened to me nung una, medyo may may, may may pakiramdam ako pero yung sumakit talaga yung lalamunan ko. Kaya I'm sure the others have the same uh, the same experience. Yun ang sinasabi sa akin. Pero ngayon okay na nakapag nag nag, nag isolate ako na isang linggo. Um uh, Panayang test ko na ano negative na naman lumabas kaya pero talagang ibang klase itong Omicron ang bilis sumikot at uh, pati si Attorney Vic Rodriguez sa aking chief of staff tinamaan yung chief security ko tinamaan uh, in, uh, yung last testing yung mga sa staff namin sa headquarters there were about 68 na na staff namin na uh, from the from the ano from uh, di mga campaign workers hanggang doon sa aming mga delivery hanggang doon sa aming mga uh, uh, pati yung legal section namin na wala lahat tinamaan lahat so sinara muna namin yung HQ para naman to be safe ano uh, although now uh, habang uh, habang yung mga hindi naman nag positive eh, sinabi namin pumasok muna kay magripak kasi hindi pa naman tapos yung uh, yung aming ginagawang rehabilitation at saka pagtulong sa mga victims of uh, typhoon Odet. So sabi ko eh nagbago na yung ating pinapadala, hindi na yung relief goods dahil yung gobyerno marami pinapadala ng pagkain. Ah, uh, so ang ginawa namin eh yung so, pagpapakinggan noon. <laughs> marami nagpapadala. Ay, ay talaga, alam mo, ay, ay, hindi pa kami, hum, ay, talagang ibang klase ugali ng Pilipino, hindi pa kami humihingi sa yung mga dating kaibigan natin, yung mga dating pinupunta na boss, pahingi naman ng ganito, yung mga, mga relief goods, mga canned goods, ganyan. Uh, hindi, basta nung nabalitaan nila na may, na may bagyo na malaki, eh, nagpadala na sila ng, ng kung ano-ano, kung ano yung maipadala nila. Uh, nagpadala na, kaya nakapag-respond kami kaagad. Uh, sa totoo naman eh, yung mga kasi alam naman natin may darating na pa typhoon may darating na sa sakuna magkaka problema may masusunugan so lagi kaming nangongolekta nitong mga uh, maibigay doon sa mga nasa lanta sa anumang sakuna so this is the, the, the so patuloy na lang yun ang patuloy uh, now we have opened the headquarters again pero doon lang para Ay, sa staff mo okay. wag na yung mga walk in uh, o, hindi na pwede yung public hindi pa muna dahil uh, na tatakot kami na baka uh, kakalat na naman eh uh, kaya kailangan sinusundan lang talaga namin ang mga protocols uh, basta hindi mag-lockdown yun ang importante para sa akin eh. hindi mag-lockdown hindi mag-lockdown ang dahil hindi mag-level 4 uh, dahil nga dito sa Omicron dahil ang katotohanan niyan hindi na talaga kaya ng tao na mag-lockdown ulit na hindi magtrabaho talaga wala na we are at the very limits already of our ano of uh, our capacity to <laughs> to to take care of ourselves okay. because of this omicron Uh, salamat po. Uh, just to ano, uh, this is going to be a one-hour interview. Tuloy, tuloy po tayo. This will not be interrupted by any ads yet. Okay. <laughs> but uh, we'll be concentrating on five major topics. But at the, mm. towards the end, something like in the last uh, 20 minutes, we're going to I'm going to ask you uh, uh, slam book type questions. Uh, <laughs> sorry po, um, yung iba your are uh, really questions coming from our viewers and uh, parang word association, just one sentence reactions to certain names that I'm going to mention. <laughs> so, pero I what I want, to, <laughs> this is one hour. But I, what I want to hear right now are your plans. So I don't need to keep. Uh, I'll just. Bato ko lang sa inyo yung topic and I want to know what are the plans, uh, what are your platforms for these uh, following topics. Uh, are you ready? Okay, yes, sir? of course. Yes. Let's start with, ano, with the, my, 
My favorite, and I understand yours also, agriculture. How do you see the current agriculture sector? What do you think you can do to strengthen it? Oh, there's a lot that we can do uh, because we have uh, neglected the agricultural sector for very many years. Uh, there has not been any serious development. If you remember, uh, in the late eight, in the mid '80s, uh, there, there was already a whole system, complete yeah. system. Natin. We had yes. the research in UPLB. Uh, we had IRI, na, na, 1963, pa yata na established yun. Then Phil Rice uh, was also established uh, under the uh, auspices of the then uh, of the Japanese uh, with Japanese funding. At uh, th those were the uh, those were the agencies or the bodies that were doing research uh, for so for the best varieties yes. for the Philippine condition. Eh, kung maalala ninyo, in the uh, late 60s, meron tayong tinatawag yung Miracle Rice. Dahil, yeah, I remember uh, this. Oh, dahil yeah. naghanap sila. Shorter growth variety. periods, more Tama. harvest. Uh, exactly. Na, yeah. Kaya doon ang pinagbasihan yung masagaan ng 99. Uh, Inaambisyon pa lang nila 99 bags per hectare. That's why the, kaya nang masagaan ng 99 yun. So, uh, maliit lang talaga. It's not, uh, it's not really uh, very... Uh, ngayon, to, we're talking about uh, we're talking about uh, double that uh, uh, because if it's uh, oh, okay. let's say, oh uh, that's ma maliit lang maliit lang ang ano yan maliit lang na yield ngayon yan masyado nang maliit ngayon yan so uh, then we had already after that we marami tayong mga assistance sa farmers in terms of technical assistance in terms of financial assistance uh, lahat ng inputs uh, Pati yung binhi, uh, binibigay natin sa kanila. Uh, tapos, habang, ha, pagkatapos na magtanim nung, nung, uh, nung magsasaka, uh, bago pa mag-ani, pag mag-ani na, ang pinambabayad sa production loan ay palay. Dahil hindi pa na-process. Ngayon, ang gobyerno, sila ang, mag, ang gobyerno mag-process. Sila ang de, de, nagbibigay tayo ng post-production facilities uh, para mag-dry, para mag-mill. Uh, yung para linisin yung ating yung yung ating bigas and then that went to the NFA uh, kasi sila ang nag-store sila ang nag, nag, nag um, how do you say how, sila ang nag-stabilize ng presyo kasi pagka yes, panahon ng pag-ani uh, oh exactly pag panahon rice and corn ito ha nung panahon ng pag-ani ay maba, uh, mababa ang presyo so bili sila yes. ng bili to maintain the price pagka naman uh, tag-init eh, masyado namang mataas ang presyo, magbibitaw ng supply para bumaba ng presyo. In other words, to stabilize. That was the Ngayon, idea. Yung hawak, yes. yung hawak ng NFA na bigas, mm -hmm. eh yun, dinadala naman sa tinatawag na FTI, uh, the food terminal. Yun, yun ang bagsakan. Ng, hindi, lamang ng, uh, hindi lamang ng bigas, hindi lamang ng mais, kung hindi lahat ng agricultural products. So that was the wholesale. Tapos din na pag-retail para may maka makabili ng mura, dinagay sa Kadiwa Store. Yung Kadiwa Store yeah. is run by the government. So, hindi hindi dapat kumita yan. Kaya may pagbili nila ng mas mababang presyo kaysa sa mga commercial. Yun ang naging, yung Kadiwa Store, nag, may, nagkaroon pa ng rolling Kadiwa. Yung sinakay na sa, sa, yes. sa truck. Sa, At sa, uh, yun ang sari-sari store umiikot. Para parangay. Ah. Para barangay pa yung mga hindi makapunta, lalo yung mga matatanda, yung mga nasa ospital, yung mga may sakit, etc. Et so, yun ang binuo yung ganong klaseng sistema. Yun ang palagay ko ating kailangan gawin. Uh, at the first, the first phase of that program uh, is the research. Ngayon, meron na tayong global warming, meron na tayong climate change, meron na tayong change in weather. Kailangan talaga natin makahanap ng yung mga varieties na matibay na hindi madaling masira pagka nagkaroon ng bagyo, pagka nagkaroon ng El Nino, nag-drought, medyo mas matibay-tibay na varieties that will be more resistant to the effects of climate change and global warming. Uh, we also, siyempre, we have, uh, when you're talking about uh, uh, agri, uh, yung sabi natin, yung crops yan, eh, kailangan talaga patubig. Yun ang pinakauna. Kaya improve natin, kailangan natin improve ang infrastructure uh, sa farm to market roads sa uh, sa irrigation irrigation talaga is the first is the first thing 
How uh, do you uh, plan to address, sir? Uh, sorry to interrupt you. But no. one of our problems is that we have provided funding, government, in fact, pursuant and in continuation of the projects of your father, pursuant to that and the policy of irrigation. Many of our irrigated lands have become privatized and are being mm -hmm. sold off as ah, subdivisions. How is mm -hmm. going to, government going to intervene in this? Well, there's the conflict here because if you look at the other side of the coin, uh, the, the, we have a very serious problem, housing problem in the Philippines. Uh, I happen to have been the chairman of the Committee on Housing and Urban Development in the Senate. And uh, I saw very clearly uh, the shortfall, ang kakulangan ng ating pabahay. Uh, we, at that time, we were talking about five, five million houses na kulang. Uh, I guess that number has increased by now. So we will have to live with the expansion of residential areas, which means going back again, we need varieties that we can plant that have a higher yield that can be planted because uh, the, the, uh, 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 the agricultural lands are sometimes becoming less and less. Uh, so kailangan yung yield natin mas maganda. Uh, and that is, uh, that, that, that's why the, the research is so important. Sa para naman, yung binhi na ginagamit ng ating mga magsasaka ay yung pinakamaganda para makapagbigay ng magandang return dun sa kanilang trabaho. So, the... the yes, sir. The, but, but that's... Uh, yes, sir. May, may I interrupt? Sorry, sir. Um, the fries... Uh, I, I see your program already. But the, the problem is, we are also importing vegetables. Well, our farmers aren't only rice farmers. May vegetables, they're hog racers, uh, they're chicken racers. What about our policies for that? We were practically killing the hog industry. And our, our uh, we have prioritized the importation of broilers over no, our local that, producers. There is the problem. We have prioritized importation over local production. And uh, that, is, that is where we are now. Uh, because it's easier, people make money uh, sa importation. Hindi mo kailangan isipin kung paano aayusin yung... Because agri, when you talk about agri, people tend to think only about crops. Agri is crops yeah. and fisheries livestock. and livestock. Uh -huh. Oh, yes. so kailangan ipagsama-sama lahat 'yan. Because kung titignan mo uh, titignan mo yung yung actual nutritional value ng kinakain ng tao, kailangan may protein eh. Uh, hindi naman pero mm -hmm. puro bigas lang ang kinakain, hindi puro kanin lang ang kinakain, puro kanin at gulay lang ang kinakain. We need protein uh, in our diets. So you are right, uh, the most of the most farmers are uh, have of course, may, kung meron sila tabing, sa tabing da, o meron sila tabi sila sa ilog, maglalagay ng fish trap siya. Maglalagay ng... Yeah. Uh, pagka naman na, may, nagtatanik, nagta, may, may alaga na baboy yan, may alaga na baka yan, karamihan. At uh, hindi ba nga yung mga, lalo na sa, sa yung mga uh, yung mga backyard uh, race or uh, livestock uh, na nag-aalaga sa livestock pero sa backyard lang, yung isang baboy naka naka ano yan, pang Pasko na yan. Ito, pag-graduate ni Junior, ito yung ating ililitso niya. Meron na, pati doon sa amin, yung kambing, yung kambing gag gagawin. Kambing uh, yan ko ang, pala. Uh, Oo, oh, yan, uh, yan, yan, yan ang sa ngayon ang sitwasyon. But we need to, we need, so, ang talagang kailangan natin gawin is to make pa, our, uh, our agricultural operations, we have to make them more extensive. Sa ngayon, uh, the uh, kasi mom and pop operation pa lang na bumalik tayo sa mom and pop operation halimbawa sa Ilocos Norte which I'm familiar with uh, the average land holding is 0.6 hectares hindi, ka maka, hindi mo magamit yung mga malalaking tractor yung mga lala, malalaking harvester uh, and kahit bigay, bigay mo kasi 0.6 hectares lang eh. so, yun, dalawa tatlong oras lang tapos na yun lilipat mo na naman doon sa kami kailangan uh, pinagsama-sama natin lahat at uh, uh, para uh, mag, ma, ang operation natin is large scale para meron tayong meron tayong um, meron tayong uh, savings sa cost of production kasi large scale because there are economies of scale as everyone mm -hmm. understands and secondly um, to be able to compete because um, the, the component 
uh, the, the labor cost component in the cost of production, uh, let's just say, bigas, uh, sa palay, uh, of, of, of the Philippines compared to uh, Thailand or Vietnam is almost double. In other words, masyado tayong mag-umaasa sa manual labor. Ang kailangan gawin is mechanization. Lugi-lugi talaga behind the behind tayo sa mechanization. And but we have to order, sir, we have to order part, our farmers so that we yes. can mechanize their operation. Part of the reason for the inefficiency, I understand that the the average one uh land holding is something like 0.6 of a hectare, but also uh part of this is uh, due to land reform. We broke up large agricultural estates so mm -hmm. that the individual farmer can have mm -hmm. their own land. But there doesn't seem to be support or some kind of infrastructure to support to make uh, these small farms more efficient. And mm -hmm. uh, what about subsidies? Are we th talking about more subsidies now? Every other industry, every industrialized nation subsidizes their farmers. Uh, with, with the removal of the M NFA, supposedly institutionalized yung subsidy na ito. Unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be, well, the, it seems that there's very little trickle-down effect. What are we going to do about this? Well, the problem is, is that right now, we, we do not really view them as subsidies. We view them as investments. Um, we, the, the question of subsidies also runs into our commitments in the WTO, uh, where the, the free trade agreements and, and uh, all that. I think you cannot, you, you, if you invest in the agricultural sector, it cannot be viewed as a subsidy. You are investing in a, uh, in you can almost call it because we are starting a back from the square one, an infant yes. industry. Yes. If that's what you want to, I know we are investing in an infant industry. And uh, although you <laughs> cannot say, mahirap siguro yung yung argument na yon dahil dahil matagal na tayo nagtatanim ng palay, but. Uh, the, the, the idea is that you're investing in the agricultural sector. You're not subsidizing the, 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 the industry. You're not subsidizing the price of, 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 uh, the, of the commodity. So, hindi siguro mag-apply yan because pinapaganda lang natin ang agrikultura natin. Uh, so, the, the, the solution that we found uh, that worked for us uh, in the North was we call we para kasi 0. 0.6 0. 0.6 0. 0.6 ang hirap naman masyado yon hindi natin mm -hmm. kailangan yung tractor dadaan yan eh 20 hectares yan sa isang araw eh isang pasada oh that's so yes. dapat talaga ma-organize natin and that's why pinat ipapatibay natin yung CDA yung mga cooperatives natin the cooperative ah, development there you go okay. has to be given a a they have a very fine mandate and they have very good people working in CDA. I know that because I was the author of the change of the charter of the CDA yeah, charter yeah. that was in the Senate. Kaya yes. na ko kasi vice chairman ako ng, uh, ng cooperative development. Eh. So ang, ang ano, uh, maganda na ang kanilang sistema, ngunit kulang ang funding. Because the cooperatives, uh, at, the, uh, at the moment, if you have regional, uh, mahirap, malayo, masyadong pupuntahan, hindi makapunta eh. Mga cooperative, mga magsasaka naman yan. They have to take the day of work, mag-aanap ng yes, pamasahe, maiiwanan yung pamilya. It, it's not easy. So, ang uh, one of the new developments is that mar meron na tayo in each LGU, in the province and in the cities, na magkakaroon yes. ng office ang CDA. Now, they have to, they, that we need them to organize all these farmers. Uh, and monitor. So, yeah, they have <laughs> monitor to organize. Monitor the cooperatives. Eh. Well, yun, yun ang trabaho naman ng CDA. In fact, they do it all the time. Kung pupuntahan mong CDA, hihingi mo. Halimbawa, dito sa probinsya ko, ilang ba, alim, ilang ba yung magagandang uh, cooperative, uh, agricultural cooperative, mayroong mga housing cooperative, mayroong mga teachers cooperative. Depende kung ano yung hinahanap mo. Ah, uh, Kasi I did work also with the cooperatives when I was congressman, when I was first congressman. Teachers cooperative naman ang binu namin, bawat bayan. So you can see that there is really a very good, uh, very good opportunity in the cooperative movement uh, to rationalize all of this. The key element yes. here is that, yes, maybe now kulang tayo sa supply, we will have to import. If we do not import, mababa ang supply, tataas ang presyo. Kawawa naman yung consumer. So, 
for the short term, we need to import because we have to have that supply and we cannot allow the prices to go much higher. But in the mm -hmm. long term, we have to develop our agricultural sector, the crops especially, the livestock especially, and the fisheries. Yung fisheries natin, uh, in many places, yung inland fisheries natin, are quite well developed actually. Uh, mahusay talagang Pilipino, basta bigyan mo ng pagkakataon, turuan mo ng konti, they'll pick it up immediately. Uh, ang, ang siguro, ang pag-asa ng fisheries bukod sa mga inland, is yes. sa dagat na, yung aquaculture. Uh, ah. There is a statistic that by 2000, 2035 or something like that, half of the uh, half of the seafood that will be consumed in the world will be cultivated, will no longer be uh, harvested wild. So, kailangan, let's get in on that market. Archipelagic tayo eh. Napakagandang opportunity para sa atin yan. And we, the, we, we have seen this, the beginnings of it. Doon na naman sa amin, kami nag-fingerling nag, uh, nag, nag kami development. Pinagbili namin doon sa mga nag-grow out sa Pangasinan. And that they are, uh, they are already growing. Yung mga high value na seafood na nasa dagat. So these are all possible to, to be developed. Kailangan lang natin turuan. Uh, the okay. other... Because the fisheries, um, it's okay to go. It's still okay to go uh -huh. out. Pero yung yung mga overfish na yung ibang lugar sa atin eh. Kaya kailangan na yung malalaking bangka. But they have to go out mga ilang kilometer, 12 kilometers outside already. Eh, ang uh -huh. para 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 meron silang mahuli. So bigyan natin siya na mas na malaking bangka. Uh, bigyan ng mga isa pang isa pwede natin. Gawin. If you remember, there was a program. Uh -huh na sumunod sa Masagana 99 noon na nagbigay na nga ng bangka uh, I forgot the I forgot the name of the program but uh, that was the that was another part of the yung sa uh, livestock yeah KKK din po yung program na yan KKK yeah, based in KKK oh it was based sa KKK livelihood mm -hmm. uh, yung yung sa livestock eh ganun din we uh, need to teach we need to help we have to find the better varieties yung aming ginagawa uh, na mimigay kami, uh, nagdi-distribute kami ng mga inahin. Now, it's, ito, baboy itong pinag-usapan namin. Uh, mga inahin. Tapos, pag nag, nag, nanganak na, na, meron ng, may, nanganak na yung, uh, yung inahin, ikukunin na naman, dadali na naman sa ibang farmer para ulit. Pero, syempre, yung mga biik, nandun na sa farmer, nasa kanila na yun, tuloy-tuloy na yung kanilang, kanilang livestock. So, there are many schemes that we can do not to increase yes. the production of crops, of livestock, and of fisheries here in the Philippines. Hindi lang talaga natutugunan ng ilang taon na. Except maybe in the time of Erap, when he established the uh, Carabao Center. Mm -hmm. uh, but that was, the, that was the precursor to his agri the rest of his agricultural program. Uh, so we have to continue. We have to continue because naiiwanan tayo and napakasakit kuminsan pakinggan when we talk to when we talk to uh, our friends in in Vietnam and in Thailand they, they always they always say everything we're doing we learned there with the galing kami sa UPLB doon kami natuto kaya itong nagawa namin dahil tinuro niyo sa amin sa sa ano sa field rice tinuro niyo sa amin dito sa sa UPLB um and then they ask what happened what happened sa inyo but ninyo nagagawa ay eh, mahirap sagutin so that we can go back to that the templates are really quite uh, uh, they established we we very, have oh, it's it's uh, it, it's a uh, it's a uh, ang tawag it's a uh, tawag diyan it's it's a mature technology <laughs> actually and uh, there's no need to invent anything uh, anymore, Again, uh, oh, we have, don't have to reinvent the wheel. Uh, we can just follow what worked before, invest in that success. But as you can see, dito sa discussion natin, we've been talking for what, 20 minutes on agriculture. You know, agriculture, people tend to think, ah, agree, yung nagtatanim yung magsasaka. Hindi. It's a very, very complex, it's not, it's a very uh, extensive, it has to be a very extensive system if you are going to guarantee food supply in the Philippines. Kung yun ang end result na hinahabol natin is uh, sapat na food supply, 
ay uh, palagang pal- pal- makikita natin we will be that the, this is the this is the way to go uh, and it, we have to do it because one of the main one of the first one of the first uh, 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 conclusions that we arrived at when the pandemic arrived last year was naipit ka agad ang food supply natin because we have become so dependent on importation. On importation. Uh, so talagang right. iwasan na natin yan. Alam naman natin magkakaroon ng sakaw na, magkakaroon ng problema. Eh, kung magtangpuhan tayo ng Thailand, ayaw na tayong bigyan ng bigas. So, meron nagka-issue yun na, yung isang domestic worker dun. Eh, kung ano-anong nangyari, mag-aaway tayo ng konti, magtatampuhan ng konti, ayaw tayo bigyan ng bigas. Paano ngayon tayo? Hindi ba? It's uh, the, the, anything can happen. We have to have a sufficient uh, supply. Hindi naman kung nag-aambisyon tayo mag-export, ibang usapan 'yan. Pero if we're talking about uh, export, uh, okay. Uh, uh, you, have do, you have to do many more things. Yeah, I, 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 many I more understand. Things. Kailangan nating ambition din 'yan. Pero Kaya, right now, I'm still aiming for let's feed ourselves. Eh. So, well, we are but, looking. But, what, we are uh, looking for what we are looking for is self-sufficiency. Now, we correct. can assure uh, ourselves. We can assure the people that uh, whatever happens, we we will have. They will have something to eat. Meron silang kakainin. Meron food supply na na sapat. Uh, these are these are the uh, these are the things that we are looking for. And if that's what it is, you do not need to produce one hundred percent ng inyong pangangailangan. Yes, uh, you maybe if you can produce. Uh, in the 90s, 90%, 97%. Basta, wag, kasi may mga ibang klaseng bigas, syempre mga specialist, yung mga organic, yung mga ganun, yung mga pangmayaman. <laughs> uh, <laughs> pwede, <laughs> i-import natin. I-import natin Oy, yun. Pwede nga yun. Speaking of, uh, speaking of pangmayaman, uh, thank you, kasi I, need, I have another topic, this time my topic. <laughs> Sorry po. During your father's term, Okay. During your father's term was the first and one of the biggest pushes for the conservation and development of Philippine culture and arts. In 1968, there was uh, the first Conservation Act was, was passed under your father's term. He created the National Artist Awards. He was the first to designate cultural property and national historical landmarks. Yes. Now, uh, we have a law enacted in 2009 called the Heritage Act of 2009 which supposedly uh, takes all of these into consideration but has been very uh, how do you call it, weakly implemented so mm-hmm. now we have this law but what I need to hear is what is our direction for culture and arts now because uh, everything is in there there's tourism there's education there's mm-hmm. Uh, national identity. What are your plans for this sector? It, you know, I have so many high hopes because of the Marcos years. What about the uh, well, second Marcos year? <laughs> well, uh, that is precisely the, the that is precisely the, me- <laughs> the message that the message that we have been going around and talking about. Yung amin sinasabi na unity na pagkakaisa. And uh, it, I'm, I'm sometimes asked, uh, what do you feel is the most important legacy that your father left to the Philippines? And I will say, of course, there are achievement in terms of uh, you know, all, of the, all of the systems that were put in place. But I think the most important thing, the most important legacy of my father was a sense of nationhood. And, mm-hmm. and then you, you, uh, it, when we at the time felt ourselves, felt a very, very strongly about how being Filipino. And we had a very clear idea that Pinoy ako eh. Pinoy ako, ganito kami. Ganito. And the reason why that happened is because they, what is, what is, uh, what is the, what is uh, uh, a, a culture? It is a, a shared, it is a shared sense of uh, self, right? Uh, it is the definition yes, uh, of ourselves as Filipino because you start number one. You're as you define yourself. Number one, you're a human being. Number two, you're you're male or you're female. And what's next? I'm Filipino, and that, that's how that's how fundamental it is. But unless there is a a uh, uh, a shared understanding or a shared notion, a shared idea of what a Filipino is, then you cannot identify yourself as a Filipino. And that was it was so important that if we're going to get beyond regionalism within the Philippines, that uh, we only consider ourselves Ilocano, we only consider ourselves Tagalog or Bicolano, or Bisaya or uh, Waray or uh, whatever else uh, uh, you care to categorize us, 
uh, we had to get a little bit beyond that. Of course, we're very proud where we come from and that will never go away. But we have to get a little bit beyond that and say we are, in fact, Filipinos. And that's all part of the Philippines. And that is yes. why it was so important that we understand our history, that we understand where we came from, how we became, how we came to this place, how we arrived yeah. at this place. Why is it that we speak the language that we speak? Why is it that uh, our political system is the way it is? Why is it that we do things the way we are, that we do? Those are the things. And part of that is to recognize the landmarks in our history, literally the landmarks and figuratively the landmarks in our history. Kaya tayo nagkaganyan dahil sa yung panahon ng Kastila, ganito ang nangyari. Nung panahon ng Amerikano, ganito yung nangyari. Nung dagkagera, ganito yung nangyari, etc., etc. So, this is the, and so the, and my mother was very, very much, um, <laughs> very much part of that. Because yes. ang lagi niyang sinasabi is that uh, uh, she was trying to, to, to um, reintroduce the soul of the Filipino to Filipinos themselves and then eventually to the rest of the world. Which I think she... Kaya ang dami niyang scholar ngayon, and nung panahon yeah. nila, marami tayong mga national artists, marami pa tayong mga international artists na hanggang ngayon sikat na sikat. Uh, so, the, 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 what we have to do is remember, if you remember, we, had, uh, we even have the Makiling uh, High School for Arts. Uh, that was really to develop local arts. The original name of uh, the theater in the in the cultural in the complex of the culture it was folk arts theater uh, the yes. folk arts theater was there to promote folk art yung ating local hindi mm. na yung was eh, magdadala din tayo ng mga sikat syempre mga gusto natin manood ng ng mga singer ng mga international pero nandiyan yung folk arts theater really was para to promote our local art, our local performers, our local artists, lahat yan. And that's what the cultural, the whole cultural center concept was about. And that's why it really came from a very fundamental desire for uh, the Filipinos to once again feel part of uh, this culture, which is a so shared... How, okay. what is, how are what we is going it? to do it? Um, well, I mean, there's a law. I don't again, know if you have a legislative agenda for this. Well, we have the law. Is actually, but as you play, alam mo naman dito sa Pilipinas, <laughs> sapat ang balas. Kulang lang talaga lagi sa implementation, kulang sa funding. Kasi hindi napaprioritize. Kasi oh. uh, siguro, uh, yung mga nakarasa, hindi naman importante yan eh. Hindi, ano ba yung may statwa na may statwa dyan, may ganito dito, may, hindi naman importante yan eh. I-privatize na lang natin lahat yan. Ah, uh, Hindi ba? Hindi na, li, li na yeah. trabaho ng gobyerno yan. I disagree. Uh, mm -hmm. And if they're talking solely about, uh, solely about, uh, uh, about returns, uh, you, when, you, when you have a very strong culture, look at the Southeast Asian countries around mm -hmm. us. Let's start with Thailand. Thailand has a ministry of temples, ministry of culture, and ministry yeah. of tourism. Tatlo. Tatlo yan. Para lang sa kultura. South mm -hmm. Korea, ganun din. Meron silang ganyan. Vietnam, meron yeah, din silang ganyan. And I'm tayo, painfully tayo, aware. <laughs> Oo, oh, tayo kailangan natin magbalikan yan. Iniisip, importante yan. Because what is a culture? A culture is a shared consciousness. And we, yeah. have, to, we have to have a consciousness to share. And we have to explain to people, eto tayo, eto ang pagka-Pilipino. Kaya te, nung panahon, kailangan balik tayo sa panahon na sikat na sikat ang Pilipinas. Hindi, Pinoy ako eh. Hindi nga galing ako ang Pilipinas eh. Sikat na eh. Alam mo itong mga kasama natin, magagaling lahat yan. And we can do that because we have made a name for ourselves in our, with our OFWs. Kilalang kilalang na sila. That uh, Philippines, they know what Philippines, they prefer to have Filipinos. We speak good English, we're hard workers, we're well-trained, we are honest. We're even clean. <laughs> Meron pang kasama ah, kumintang. <laughs> <laughs> so, that, 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 that all derived from that, that desire to remind so ourselves of that shared consciousness of being a Filipino. So it's going to be by directive because, yeah, we do have a law. It, it, it has some quirks. Eh. Kailangan pang ayusin yung batas. But what, what we need to see is that there is something coming from the highest office of the land saying that okay lgus everybody this is this is part of governance because in fact how can you have governance if you don't 
know your own culture, you don't know your own history, then even when we make laws, we can't make laws if we know that it does it isn't even compatible or comp yeah, with our culture and our practices. You know, exactly. There there are things that uh, that are work very well for maybe another country that will not apply here simply because that's not the way we do things, just not how we think. But you see. From that shared consciousness, alimbawa, maliwanag na yung pagkapinoy natin, na, ng pati mga bata, naintindihan nila na ito yung kasaysayan ng ating bansa, ito yung mga pangyayari sa ating bansa, tapos ang ugali ng Pilipino, ganito talaga, yun ang itinuturo ng mga magulang. And from there, we will know, sige, ano pang kulang natin? Ano bang kulang ng sambayanan? Ano bang kailangan ayusin? Ano ba? And... Everyone, because now we are aware of that shared consciousness, uh, we, we, we know more or less what it is that the whole country needs. And we will work towards that. Ah, yan pala. O oh, sige, pagandahin natin, magtulungan tayo. Because Pinoy tayo, kailangan natin tulungan yung kapwa nating Pinoy. And it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's, 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 uh, it's not an easy thing to do. But Filipinos are very... Culturally oriented, um, uh, we 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 we, are, we, yeah. we yeah we are we we, we yeah. pick up on all of these things very quickly uh, because nakali well, nakalikan lang eh hindi na pa hindi na papagusapan pag napagusapan yan ah ganon na pala tama tama na alala ko ganon pala eh. kini kwento ng aking ninuno kini kwento ng nolo ko ganon pala yon while we're on the topic sir since kultura na lang ba I would like to say why this is an important question for our viewers um, how are you going to manage your family and friends when you become president of many administrations fail because there are people we can't say no to it's it's our nature because we're very communal we're very yeah. you know together so yeah. pagka na so now no. ha, you're going to be in a position where people will be constantly coming to you they'll be the you know, so, other administrations have suffered from this no matter how good they were it became a problem later on how yeah. are you going to manage this Eh, hindi ba, kaga, kaya, speaking of shared consciousness and culture, hindi ba, uh, the greatest strength of the Filipino is payang pakiusapan. Yun na nga eh. Be, you know, that seems to be also our greatest weakness. Kasi kaya nga pakiusapan, hindi na nasusundan yung, yung rules. Uh, the, the, only, the, only, the only solution to that is to run, as, run it as professionally as possible. If there is a job that needs to be done, don't get your cousin, get only unless your cousin is the is the uh, is the recognized uh, expert in that field the best filipino uh, that you can find to work in that field no run it professionally run it professionally yes, and make yes. sure that the people who are uh in in uh in 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 their place in whatever position in the government uh, know know their job and are the are very good at their job because you need you, you cannot you cannot be wasting time and resources with people who are not doing their work or who do not know their job or have not good, have, have no good ideas to pull ourselves out of this uh, of this economic uh, situation that the pandemic brought uh, we are going to have to again I, I, to, 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 to be imaginative and to come up with uh, new uh, new solutions. Look at uh, what is happening in technology. There are things that are happening before that we never thought was were going to be actually possible. It looked like magic, but it's because people are thinking uh, uh, in, in later, med tawag lateral thinking, the tawag uh, yes. out of the box, uh, all of these things. Creative but thinking. we have to be creative. We have to be imaginative, and to do that, you have to have the best people around you. And no matter how good you are, tama yung sinabi mo, kahit gano'ng kagaling yung na, namumuno, kung lahat ng tao niya ay tamad <laughs> o hin, mahina, hindi marunong, hindi alam ang trabaho, eh, yun na nga yung pakiusap. Yung pakiusap, <laughs> pakiusap Wait, alam eh. Mo naman, alam mo naman, there's, there's, a, there's, a, in, there's always a way. Ano, yung, alam mo naman sa buhay naman, there, there's always a way to compromise kung ano man yung pangangailangan. But let's not compromise the, let us not compromise the performance of government. Because uh, when government's, government's performance is compromised, it affects immediately tens of millions of people. 
And so that's what we have to watch out for. That's why it's important that uh, you are very assured as a leader, you are very assured that the people that you are going to appoint, the people that you are going to bring into government are the best that you can get. Uh, and uh, that's... Uh, and uh, despite, that, alam mo, and we'll go, we'll go beyond, we'll go beyond kamag-anak and uh, may, may kaibigan na may utang na loob ka, whatever it is, di ba, yung tinulungan ka sa kampanya, you will, mm-hmm. they, 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 they want to be put in some kind of position. Uh, reward you know, din eh. It's, you know, yung mga reward, yung mga reward na gano'n. Pero hindi pa rin eh. You really have to find the best people and get to, to go beyond that uh, kamag-anak and kaibigan. Mm. Not, not only uh, do you have to find the best people, you have to make sure that they are properly performing. Pagka hindi naman tama, hindi na tama yung ginagawa. Eh, manage si with men. Oh, you have to manage. Hey. Eh, eh, mga, eh, magagaling yung mga yan eh. So, uh, that's uh, that is uh, that that's really the only there are no I don't think there are any uh, magic bullets to this to this kind of uh, to this kind of situation and ta, again to to go beyond also the kamaganak and the kahit hindi mo kapartido uh, kasi kahit linabanan ka nung last election bakad eh pe, magaling magaling talaga siya talaga yung marunong yeah. sa hug racing oh Lapitan mo sabi mo, o tapos na yung election, tulungan mo na kami. Pare-pareho naman ang gusto natin. Eh. Pareho naman natin ang gusto mong pagandahin ito. Tulungan mo na lang ako. At eh, kung ano, yung, ano ba ang kailangan mo para magawa natin ito. Dapat ganun ang approach. Uh, hindi kagaya yung nangyayari. Lahat ng ginawa nung nakaraan, pangit lahat yan. Tigil natin lahat yan. Hindi. Tignan natin, baka may nagawang tama. Hindi eh. ituloy natin. O oh, itong kay, kay Pangulong Duterte, yung kanyang build, build, build. Ang pakagandang programa yan na kanyang ginawa. Uh, yung kanyang ginawa sa education, SUCs, ginawang libre, napakaganda nun. These are the things that you should recognize. Not just say, ako lang marunong. Maraming marunong ng Pilipino. Ang gagaling ng Pilipino, you have to get them all to help. Uh, it starts from that national consciousness, that uh, the, uh, the appreciation of our culture, the understanding of what a Filipino is and what a Filipino needs. All it, it, it all binds together. Kaya ginawa yan ng panahon ng aking ama. Dahil it was a necessary, it was a necessary part of our nation building. And still is. Okay, next. <laughs> uh, one sentence answer, sir. I'll just give you a name <laughs> or a phrase. <laughs> But in social a, media, sir, so to we have to adapt. <laughs> okay, <laughs> first, <laughs> um, one sentence response lang. Uh, off the top of your head, Sara Duterte. Uh, best partner I could have had. <laughs> Love it. Nora Honor. Oh, I'm a big fan. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. Uh, Conrad Banal. <laughs> oh. Hindi mo kami nag- Hindi mo kami nagpa-plugging. Has always something worthwhile to listen to to say. Ayan. Renewable energy. Oh, absolutely necessary in the face of uh, climate change. Uh, the University of the Philippines. Well, it's still the premier. It's the, still the premier learning institution in the Philippines and uh, must be well supported by government. And TFL, Kak? Expand. Uy, like that. <laughs> Universal health care law. Absolutely necessary also. Now we have to implement it properly. Do you think it's only implementation? Uh, well, it's funding. Uh, funding is, is, is becoming the problem, especially the, 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 napunta lahat ng pondo sa healthcare sa pandemic. Uh, so hindi pa talaga na, hindi pa talaga na implement ng, ng, ng mabuti yung universal healthcare. But uh, it's again something close to me. Pero kailangan din bantayan eh, because the, all the universal healthcare uh, programs of other countries bankrupted those countries, and uh, so we have to be careful on how we apply the universal healthcare law. Free tertiary education. Uh, uh, long delay. 
long delayed huh? uh, uh, policy. Expand. SUCs. What's that? SUCs. Oh, SUCs. All right. Uh, uh, um, art together. <laughs> a good, a good partner in government. <laughs> so I have a few more minutes. One more. Okay. My other concern is the internet. Okay. We have difficulty with a duopoly and a new th third party coming in, but doesn't seem to be working. We're not getting cheaper, faster, better internet service. What are we going to do with this? That is a huge problem. Uh, that has been that has been highlighted by the pandemic. Uh, we were already headed towards uh, the metaverse, as it's now being being called. Uh, but we were already headed to depend our greater dependence on the on the digital infrastructure. Uh, of course, the pandemic accelerated all of that because napunta pati schooling, napunta ron pati uh, yung mga ibang bagay na dating ginagawa nating face to face napunta lahat sa internet. And so. I, I, I'm not quite privy to why it is still not, after all the promises that we have heard over so many years, but di pa nabubuyan. Because if we look at the other countries, again, it's another area we do not have to reinvent the wheel. Uh, one of the most, uh, one of the, 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 the best examples of infrastructure, of digital infrastructure is South Korea. So let's send people to South Korea and ask them, how is it? How did you do this? What are the things? And we won't ab adapt your technology. We'll adapt the latest technologies that are available. Because uh, even 5G na sila, matagal ng 5G yan. Eh, tignan natin yung mga bagong 5G. Tignan natin yung mga bagong sistema, yung mga bagong equipment, the hardware, the software. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, I think it's because we have to... There is a very strange, there is a very funny, uh, funny arrangement uh, with our uh, basically two basic internet providers in that uh, the, we have to put, again, I think it, it still makes sense for the government to have the backbone, its own backbone, na pinapagamit sa mga, uh, sa mga telco. And that's a, right. that, a, that is an investment that can be done. Uh, and will this brings us back this brings us to another uh, some other uh, concept that i think we should really encourage and that is the ppp uh, the government cannot do everything the private sector cannot do everything but a partnership between government and private sector can do very many things very very well uh, okay. it's just very not quickly. easy to do uh, mm -mm. very quickly now uh, because we have OFWs watching and hanging on to your every word in two sentences what is your program for OFWs how do we plan for their retirement how about their health care how about their safety while they're abroad the the solution has, has come to us in the, now the newly created Department of uh, Migrant Workers, uh, and uh, that is those uh, those the problems that have been arising uh, for our OFWs. Instead of depending on uh, uh, on, on uh, uh, imaginative funding and imaginative. Uh, uh, like the DFA, hihingi ng pera sa justice, kukuha ng abogado. It's not, there's no formal institutionalized uh, uh, method for helping our OFWs. And that will be, that will be it. For those who are returning, uh, tapos na ang kontrata, mag-retraining tayo. Ginagawa na natin yan noon. Eh. Mag-retraining tayo para makabalik ulit sila sa trabaho. Uh, yung mga naipit dito, napilitang umuwi, eh, kausapin natin yung pinanggalingan nilang bansa. At sabihin natin, ibalik na natin yung mga, since mula ng pandemya, o pabawas na yung pandemya, eh, unahin nyo naman, i-prioritize naman ninyo yung mga Pilipino na nagtrabaho na dyan, na kinala naman ninyo ng magandang kanilang trabaho. So there's, yeah, but there's, there are lots of other, meron na, na, na tinanong ako na isang araw, pabahay din ng ating mga yes. umuwing OFW, uh, yung kanilang health benefits, uh, Kasi iniwanan na nila yung korporasyon nila. Those benefits no longer apply pag nandito sila. Uh, so, the universal health care. Uh, we can apply that. We can make sure that it's applied properly. Uh, these, are, these are marami, ma, you know, we, uh, the, the, the simple way to approach all of the issues uh, that surround OFWs is to recognize their contribution to the country and what they have done for the Philippines over I don't know. We're close to 50 years already, and uh, they, they, kahit papano, 
the recognition of the world that Filipinos are good workers are because of them. And uh, they have been good ambassadors for our country. And they have been running, uh, they have been keeping the economy in the difficult times, have been keeping the economy above water. Uh, there's no other, other way to put it. And so we must recognize that. And we should return to them at least a part of what they have given to the Philippines. Okay, this one might take a while, but there are two aspects to this question. Um, we've asked a lot of things of what, what you are going to be doing for the country. My turn to ask, what can we do for you when you become president? Sorry, if, when you become president, what do you want us to do? We want, well, the, what would be most important, of course, would be to work again for national interest, for the nation building. Let us recognize that it is time to return to the concept of nation building. Uh, we, the, the uh, politi partisan politics has taken too large a part of our uh, national uh, discussion. Uh, and it plays a part. Of course, politics cannot be avoided. But it, it, once the, the part of politics has been played, uh, I think that yung kagaya ng sinabi ko, when we are hiring people, we hire the best. We do not hire because they belong to your party. We hire the best. And uh, that is, I think, the, the most important thing is that uh, we keep politics in its place. And we always have in our minds the national interest, always have in our minds nation building. It is a, it is a phrase that I grew up with. And it was the, 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 the sole uh, motivating factor, I think, behind the work of my father. And I have adopted that. And I say, let us do what is good for the country. Let us build this nation up. This is not the work of a day. This is a work of a long time. But at least we should start to put in the institutions, the organizations, and the policies in place and uh, like uh, President Duterte is complaining, hindi niya matapos sa six years yung gusto niyang gawin. And, uh, you know, six years actually is not a long time for a president to do all the, all the work that he has to do. But you can start, you can start, uh, you can put the, you can strengthen the institutions that you know are going to be necessary to have a, polit a stable political uh, system. Uh, you have to put in the, uh, the different uh, elements within the economy. Uh, so that our economy is strong and a vibrant part of the global economy. That's very important because we have to be think uh, we have to think globally now. Uh, and so, what we need is for people to be working in the right direction, in the same direction, which brings us back again to what you started with, with the shared consciousness. Uh, let us always remind <laughs> ourselves we are Filipinos. And no one is going to help Filipinos except Filipinos themselves. And, and but the good part of that is that we have the capabilities. I am so confident that if we tap into the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the uh, abilities, uh, the industry, the resourcefulness, uh, the kindness, the grace of Filipinos, and we do that, we tap into that properly. I am so confident that we will succeed as long as we're working together, understanding what needs to be done and sacrificing ourselves for the country. That is the most important thing. One last. We have a short time. Our, I have had the good fortune of representing many heroes in the Philippines, combat veterans, uh, mm. people who have been nominated for medals of valor. They're, they're mm. alive. They're serving in the AFD. Mm -hmm. um, the, the AFP's morale is high from this administration. I need a message from you to them. What do you what, what can you say to our gallant men and women serving in the armed forces? They have been so visible and uh, tirelessly working, particularly in civil defense during the last major typhoon. Yes. Well, what the message do you have for them? That they that they should be they should they should be commended for all the work that they do. Uh, I always say we must understand that the, uh, the military, uh, the uniformed services are the only part of society whose, whose, uh, uh, whose uh, social contract with the state includes putting life and limb in danger. That, that, nothing, that, that social contract is only for the men, in the men and women in the military. 
And that is what us civilians we have to recognize, uh, that we are, in fact, uh, we, although they are quiet, they are in their camps. They are not. They are not in our. Uh, we, they're not in our in our everyday uh, dealings. Uh, but that they are there and that they are protecting the state. They are protecting the republic and they are protecting the Filipino people. And we must recognize that. For them to do their jobs, we must also respect the culture within the military, and that we must allow the military to run itself. Because iba ang patakbo ng militar, iba ang patakbo sa civilian. Kailangan natin kilala yung mga opisyal jan, ang gagaling ng mga opisyal natin, yung mga tropa natin ang tatapang. Eh, kailangan talaga ay eh, lahat ng suporta na ibibigay na kailangan nila ibigay natin hanggat kaya natin. Dahil eh, itong mga ito ay uh, itinataya na nga ang buhay para sa atin. Eh. Eh, the least we could do is to give it back. But uh, again, uh, right now. Uh, the military right now has a uh, has a, uh, has a big job to do. Continuing big, continuing big job to do. Uh, uh, although they have had some very good successes in the past few years, and again we co we must commend them for that. The sacrifices that have made, uh, they have sacrificed uh, life and limb uh, over and over and over again. Uh, for the sake of the safety and uh, of, of, of the rest of the country. Okay? We all, must always recognize that. And I always remind when I speak, when I talk to, to soldiers, lalo na yung mga na-wounded na pinupuntahan namin sa, na yung mga sugatan na pinupuntahan namin sa ospital, sabi niya, baka, at isang sabi ko sa mga, baka akala ninyo hindi namin alam ang inyong ginagawa dahil nasa area kayo, nasa kampo kayo. Hindi nyo naririnig ang uh, usapan ng, ng civilian population na kami ay talagang alam namin ang inyong ginagawa, alam namin ang tapang ninyo, alam namin ang sakripisyo ninyo. Kaya't dapat naman eh, kung anong magagawa namin para et, tulungan kayo at maging mas maganda ang patakbo ng inyong trabaho, eh, gagawin natin. One more. One more. Wait time pa. Um, your grandmother, I understand, was a teacher. Uh, your yes. paternal grandmother. As a teacher, right. my grandmother was the same. Um, message for our teachers: they they're waiting for their salaries again. Um, there were some before, but uh, they, we still haven't bring, brought them up to industry standard. Uh, message for them, please. And what what are our plans for uplifting the condition of our public school teachers? Well, I have always considered in a, a, a teach all all teachers, all of them. I consider them all heroes uh, because we have to, again, you have to remember, parang sundalo yan eh. It is, uh, it is a calling. It's a, if it, it's a, a teaching is a vocation. It's not a profession. It's not a job. Uh, like I always say, may kilala ka bang teacher na milyonaryo? Wala. Hindi naman nag-teach yan. Hindi nagtuturo yan dahil, dahil gusto nilang umaman. Gusto nilang turuan ang mga bata para yung mga bata handa sila sa buhay nilang parating na buhay nila. They want them to be prepared. And that is their vocation. And that's why we have to support. Eh, nakikita naman natin, the teachers are having to do all kinds of other things. Pagka yung sweldo nga nila hindi, hindi na late, eh, magpa 5-6 na yan, malulubog na sa utang yan, hindi na habang buhay na yan, nandiyan na kay ipit na sa, sa, kanilang mga, sa kanilang mga utang. Kaya tulungan natin ang teacher, not, not only financially, ano, make sure, simple lang naman, bagay na yung kanilang, kanilang sahod na makuha nila ng tama. And we should, uh, more benefits also, uh, we should uh, do, do more for their families so that they do not worry about their families, they worry about their students and teaching. Hindi nila kailangan naalala, yung anak ko may sakit, wala akong pambayad ng doktor, wala akong pambili ng gamot, dapat wala, hindi, na, hindi na nila kailangan dapat iniisip yun. Uh, I think in the, uh, speaking about teachers, you're ending up talking about the whole educational system. We really have to, uh, well, with the new uh, remote learning, we have to really uh, try and make it better. The digital infrastructure obviously comes into it. But uh, uh, we have to think beyond the pandemic and that our educational system has to be uh, has to be upgraded. And the first part of that is the support that we have for the teachers, not only financial support, but also support in terms of the infrastructure, the classrooms, the school buildings, the, the materials, uh, the, the supplies, the school supplies, the equipment that they have. Uh, 
you know, if you look at the, you look at normal public school, how many of them have, have computers? It's 2022. Ang dami siya. Sa kanila, walang computer. Mga bata, hindi pa nakahawak ng... Nakahawak ng computer yung Game Boy nila at saka yung smartphone ng, ng magulang nila. Pero hindi sila humahawak ng computer. Uh, that's that's a, that's fundamental already in, 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 uh, in the year 2022. Uh, so something as simple as that, the equipment... Uh, they, I go, I go to places. Meron pang naka, meron pang ginagamit na Marcos School building. The Marcos School buildings were 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 put up in 1967, 68. Eh, dapat yan 20 years, 25 years lang yan. Papalitan na yan, babaguhin na yan. Uh, nandiyan pa rin. Kaya yun, yung mga facilities kailangan natin ayusin. And the teachers, not only financial, not only in terms of benefits, but also in terms of uh, refresher courses, retraining. Ang bilis ng takbo ng teknolohiya, for example. Uh, even, even social systems, political systems, economic systems are moving very, very quickly. And the teachers have to have a good awareness of what's happening uh, in the rest of the world so that the, the teachings that they are giving their students are relevant to the global economy are relevant to this new world that we are in, this technologically driven world that we are in. Uh, so it, it is not only hardware, it is not only finance, it's also software. Uh, and we, uh, ang, ang teacher, ang daling, ang daling, siyempre teacher yan eh, mga daling turuan ng teacher, we're talking about yung delayed na sweldo, nung una ako naging congressman, yun ang nakita kong problema dun sa distrito ko. So nagtayo ako ng cooperative sa bawat bayan ng teachers cooperative para hindi na sila magpa-5-6, meron silang savings and loan, binigyan namin ng konting seed money, and they're very successful. So simple things like that that we can, we can do to help uh, the teacher's condition, the teacher's plight. Then pag-isipan natin, pag magka-pera tayo, bigyan natin ng scholarship yung mga anak nila. There you go. Thank you very much. I understand you have another interview lined up for 10 o'clock, so I apologize to the person who is next interviewing you. Uh, but I would like to thank you very much. And one last, one last, last, last na talaga. A message yeah. to those who are watching you on Luminous. Well, uh, I thank you very much for, uh, for showing an interest and uh, being part of this discussion that we are having with Attorney Trixie, uh, talking about some of the issues of the day. Uh, you know that we are still in the middle of the pandemic, and uh, I know that pagod na ang tao na kaka dito sa mga protocol natin pero pagtiyagaan po natin mag-iingat lang po tayo balikan natin yung dating protocol uh, sana naman eh, pagka ganun ang ating ginawa matatapos na itong problema na ito but in the meantime ako'y nagpapasalamat sa lahat ng nagpapa, nagpapahayag ng suporta at tiwala sa Uniteam sa aming dalawa ni Inday Sara at eh, sana ipagpatuloy po natin itong ating advokasya ng pagkakaisa hanggat tayo'y magtagumpay Hindi lamang sa halalan, kung hindi sa ating kilusan ng pagkakaisa ng sambayan ng Pilipino. Maraming salamat. Salamat, Attorney Trixie. Uh, salamat sa lahat ng mga taga-subaybay at uh, magandang umaga po sa inyo lahat. Maraming salamat, sir. Para dun sa mga nanonood, may karambola pa po afterwards. Salamat, sir. In two years, I want to interview you again and let's see where we are in your programs and plans. Oh my thank God. you very sir. much. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, sir. <laughs>